are back with even more amazing updates for June. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. First up, we have a brand new assistant to help you out with your Flutterflow issues. Let me help you. No, I'm not talking about you, Flash. Instead, check out the new Divok panel currently in beta, available when you run your app in test mode. This is very handy in figuring out the current state of the variables used by the current page or the current component and to ensure that your business logic is working as expected. Let's look at the product details page of an e-commerce application. My logic says that every time I add a product to the card, it will add the cart object to the app state variable that holds the list of items and that in turn will increment my cart counter. However, when I try this flow in test mode, something seems to be wrong because adding the product to the cart does not increment the cart counter. Now, how many of you have used snack bars to debug such a situation? Well, no more of that. Just open the debug panel from the left side of your test mode and there you go. You have the entire list of variables with their current state values. Now I'm going to search the cart items app state variable and see it is empty. Now I'll go ahead and verify my action flow, find the error, fix it. And now if I run this app again, you see that the app state is being populated with the current cart items and my cart counter is being incremented. I'm really curious to know your experience with this feature and how much debugging time it will save you. Let us know in the comments. Next up is another powerful feature, recursive components. So basically a component that can draw itself as a child. For example, imagine a comment section on a website like Reddit where you have comments on a post and each comment can have more replies and each reply can have even more replies. A recursive component is perfect here because it can draw a comment and if there are replies, it can draw itself as a child for displaying each reply, no matter how many levels of replies there are. Here's a great example by Will from our team who built Reddit's nested comment structure using Flutterflow and you can try it out yourself as well. Let me demo a simpler version of the same structure. Here's an API that returns a list of comments on a post each comment includes their unique comment ID, the parent comment ID, which is the ID of the parent comment. Now, if this is a top level comment, there is no parent. So this ID will be null in that case. And of course, replies, which is a nested list of comments. Our UI will mirror the same structure exactly. Now in Flutterflow, just remember to do two things to recreate this UI. First, building your comment component. This is going to represent your top level comment for your post as you see in this UI. But then to show the children comments, you add a child column and redraw the same comment element. Now creating a component that recursively draws itself as long as there is a child comment available. Now in your post details page, just add a column that dynamically generates the parent comments from a variable. So yeah, that was recursive components in a nutshell, but I will suggest you watch this detailed video by John to learn more about it. We also had some smaller updates in June, however, that will likely have a significant impact on your apps. We have added variable bindings to more features such as pie chart colors. Now you can add dynamic colors to the pie chart slices, border and donut hole. Additionally, we have also included variable bindings for gradient color in a container. Here's a cool demo of a credit card page where you can toggle between darker shades or lighter shades of gradient combos for the background and the credit card block as the user switches their color mode preference. Building on this demo, it would be so much cooler if we could animate the text color of the credit card number as you hover over it or animate the text size when a user clicks on it to copy the number. This is now possible because you can now enable the animate changes toggle on a text widget. So any changes in properties like the text color, text size will be smoothly animated. Here's a cool example where the text color changes when the user hovers over the card number blocks. Last but not least, we have a very useful feature for branching. When you encounter merge conflicts between your branch and the main branch, in certain cases involving the variables or the API, you can also view the view configuration toggle, which lets you see the 
code configuration changes between the main branch and your branch. Red indicates changes that have been removed and green indicates changes that have been added. So now it is easier for you to see the configuration changes between both branches. And did you notice that branching is now available on the pro plan? So everyone on the pro plan, please do try it out and give us some feedback. And that's all the updates for June. The documentation for these new features are available at docs.flutterfur.io. So go ahead and try them out and show us what you've built using these new features while we work on some fun stuff for July. So see you soon and happy building.